My sex change operation got botched My guardian angel fell asleep on the watch Now all I got is a bobby doll crotch I got an angry inch Six inches forward and five inches back I got a, I got an angry inch Six inches forward and five inches back I got a, I got an angry inch I'm from the land where you still hear the cries I had to get out, had to sever all ties I changed my name and assumed a disguise I got an angry inch Six inches forward and five inches back I got a, I got an angry inch Six inches forward and five inches back I got a, I got an angry inch Six inches forward and five inches back The train is coming and I'm tied to the track I try to get up but I can't get no slack I got an angry inch, angry inch My mother made my tits out of clay my boyfriend told me that he'd take me away They dragged me to the doctor one day Oh, I got an angry inch Oh, 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 six inches forward and five inches back I got a, I got an angry inch Six inches forward and five inches back I got a, I got an angry inch Long story short Yeah, long story short When I woke up from the operation, I was bleeding down there I was bleeding from the gash between my legs. My first day as a woman, already it's that time of the month. But two days later, the hole closed up. The wound healed, and I was left with a one-inch mound of flesh where my penis used to be, where my vagina never was. It was a one-inch mound of flesh with a scar running down it like a sideways grimace on an eyeless face. It was just a little bulge. It was an angry inch. Oh, six inches forward and five inches back. I got a, I got an angry inch. Six inches forward, five inches back. I got a, I got an angry inch. Six inches forward and five inches back. The train is coming and I'm tied to the track. I try to get up, but I can't get no slack. I got an angry inch. Angry inch, oh, oh, six inches forward, five inches back. I stay undercover till the night turns to black. I got my inch, I set to attack. I got an angry inch, angry inch. Ooh. That's Angry Inch from Hedwig and the Angry Inch. This was a rough song to write because there's a lot of story that has to unfold. And, um, and there's a lot of details. I mean, it's like, I mean, you have to actually get inside the story of a vaginoplasty that goes wrong. So, you know, it's, it's a lot to stick in a song. Um, I actually came up with the chord progression and the melody on a subway. You know, when, once I had the melody, it kind of all really unfolded, and I tried to, in, in, uh, very, very sort of naturally, and, and, and I tried to throw in very sort of like, I don't know, colorful things like my mother made my tits out of clay, which I don't even know why, like where that came from, that I thought that was funny to say. But, oh, because the mother's a sculptor. And it seemed like, it was such a funny line that seems to like, like I can imagine that in a song that has nothing to do with a transsexual whose mother taught sculpture to limbless deaf children. And yet, so it works in the story, but it's also just kind of a kooky sort of, you know, line that you might hear in a B-52 song or something. John Cameron Mitchell and I started working on Hedwig, I, I think, well, we started working on a musical. Hedwig had nothing to do with it when we started. It was a, it was a, it was a sort of autobiographical musical about John, um, but instead of being an actor, he was a rock star. And he was looking at, it was, it was a guy who was taking a moment out of, to look back at relationships that he'd had and wondering if he'd somehow met and then lost his other half. John had told me this, this fantastic story about a babysitter from mm -hmm. East Germany. Or from, I don't even know if she was from East Germany. She may have been West German. She, but she, was a, she, she had married a, a GI and then got divorced and she was living in Junction City in a trailer. And, and, 
and babysitting for his family and also turning tricks in the trailer. And he told me this very funny story about him and a friend going to her house, performing for her and drinking with her and whatever. And so he told me this great story. I was like, and at the time I was working at a club called Squeezebox. And it was the first in a long time, like gay rock and roll club. It was very oriented around not just punk rock, it had a sort of punk rock ethos to it. And every Friday night, the house band that I was the sort of Paul Schaefer of would back up a different drag queen doing a 20 to 35 minute show with about four cover songs and some patter between. Some of, the, some, some of them, there was almost no patter, but some of them would make like a little, like a little evening of it. And, and we would do these drag shows with a four piece rock band and I, and I played piano and guitar. And um, I mean, you can easily see how this is the model for the thing that's on, on the stage. Um, so this is Midnight Radio, which is the finale song in Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Rain falls on burns dry the dream or a song that hits you so hard filling you up suddenly gone Love, give, free, no, in your soul, like your blood knows the way, from your heart to your brain, know that you're home, and you're shining like the brightest stars. A transmission on the midnight radio And you're spinning like a 45 ballerina Dancing to your rock and roll So here's the Patty and Tina and Yoko, Aretha, and Nona, and Nico, and me. Okay, well the truth about me is I'm not really a punker. I'm not really a punk rocker as much as I come off or pretend to be. But I like punk a lot and, and I really learned how to do punk at Squeezebox. Like, like how to play punk music. Um, and my influences are very varied when I write. And, I, and when this song started, well, first of all, I had only like three days to write it. It started off kind of as a variation on Moon River, which I was very obsessed with. And um, so that's, that's actually where, where it started, was thinking about Moon River. And then I came up with this, I came up with that, with that melody that's, Rain falls hard, burns dry, a dream or a song. And it's like it goes up an octave and a half, like one note at a time. And, um, and it was really hard to just kind of figure out like how the hell I'm going to come up with. So each word had to work on its own and work as, as a whole. So I spent a lot of time, um, I, 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 everything had to be crash course on it. So I spent, um, I spent hours over at the Strand just reading poetry. And then, um, you know, there's a little bit of Elton John, and I mean, like, obviously the ballerina reference. I, I, mean, I, I only was able, I only allowed myself to say ballerina because of Tiny Dancer. And then I got to the, I got to that, that third verse and knew that I wanted it to be like shout outs to, to stars. And I called John up and I was like, I was like, I had, I had my own little list. And I was like, John, who, like, who would, who would Hedwig want to give a shout out to? And um, we both came up with, a lot of names, and um, the, the the thing is, is that once you have Patty, you can't have you can't have Cindy, you can't have Debbie, you can't have um, Chrissy. 
because once she she takes the, she anything that ends in that vowel sound she took. So once we had once we had Patty Smith in there, that was that. I love bringing in Aretha because that I think when when she first made a name for herself, you know, was singing. She took respect, which was Otis Redding's song, and it's like this very sort of it's a very sort of like blues R and B trope about about. Hey, I'm the man. I earn the money, and when I come home, you give me some goddamn respect. And so then she took the song and she turned and she like turned. She switched the genders on it. When we first thought of the Hedwig character, one of the first things we came up with was that she had she had performed with the rock star before he was famous, and then he became famous, and she was stuck singing in dives, and she thought they were going to go off and be famous together. So she was bitter, and she had a song. And I had the title "Wicked Little Town," and then I was at a friend's house in Grinnell, Iowa, and it was like real, it was like as close to the uh, as close to the road as this camera is to me. And so the so the the you know the house would shake when when trucks would drive by, and I'm staring out the window, and I'm like, "All right, if you're going to call yourself a songwriter, you need to be able to write Wicked Little Town while looking out this window." So I did, um, and then and then. Uh, later wrote the Wicked Little Town reprise, um, and there's a story there too. Forgive me for I did not know Cause I was just a boy You were so much more Than any God could ever plan More than a woman or a man And now I understand How much I took from you That when everything starts breaking down You take the pieces off the ground And show this wicked town Something beautiful and new You think that luck has left you there But maybe there's nothing up in the sky but air And there's no mystical design No cosmic lover pre-assigned There's nothing you can find That cannot be found Cause with all the changes you've been it seems the stranger's always you Alone again in some new wicked little town My voice through the dark turns and noise of this wicked little town. Oh, it's a wicked little town. Goodbye, wicked little town. And this is an ending I can only play on the piano, so. I should probably just fade out to nothing now. There. It's always important to us that Hedwig is performing in the show in the place that we're actually where where the audience and, and the performers actually are. And 
it was a bit of a struggle to think, well, how did, how did we get this Broadway gig? And so coming up with that, with that, um, that idea of being on the set of a closed musical, um, um, when, when John first brought that to me, it was because of Rent. We, when Rent was closing, we'd been trying to do this for so long, but that's how long it was. The set was still, we knew it hadn't yet closed. We were like, we need to get in there and do it on that set. Um, so that's, we've been talking about this for a long time. And um, so that went away, and so we had to think of a fictional show. Uh, my boyfriend thought of Hurt Locker the musical, which made John and me laugh hysterically. So, so we were like, all right, there it is. So to see like a thousand people every night actually like going nuts for this show is in, in a Broadway house is, and have it really be the authentic thing that it is, as opposed to, it's not really Broadwayized. I mean, it, it, it fills the space, but just the right amount. But we used to, you know, we used to do shows for like, at, at the Jane Street. Uh, it was only because our publicist, Tom D'Ambrosio, knew what he was, knew to always, every time the press was there, he just papered the house. And so we gave the impression that we were a hit, but nobody was really coming to see us at all. So to watch, to see thou, like a thousand people every night just going absolutely nuts, it's kind of the thrill of a lifetime. Look what you've done. You chig alone. You know that I loved you, hun. And I didn't wanna know that you're cool. Seductive serenade. Oh. Was a tool of your trade, you jig alone. Oh, oh, oh. Of all the riches you surveyed, and all that you can lift, I'm just another dollar that you made in your loan. Long grip Look what you've done You jig alone Another hustle has been run But now you ought to know That this fool Can no longer be swayed oh, By the tools Of your trade You jig alone I'm just another John you chips Another sucker stiffed A walk on roll In the script To your long, long grift The love that had me in your grip Was just a long, long grift